It is hotter than Hades outside, and it got me wondering, how does extreme heat affect our health? Well, Professor Danielle Gagnon here at the Montreal Heart Institute is looking into just that through his heat lab. He's trying to figure out why extreme heat affects some people more than others. Come on, let's go inside. Hi, Professor Gagnon. Hi, Deborah. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. So this is the famous heat lab. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. Thank you. <laughs> it's what? What is the temperature saying yeah. right now? So right now, this is our heat chamber, and inside is 38 degrees Celsius with 60% humidity. Can I take a Absolutely. peek? Absolutely. I mean, it's about 34, 32, 34 degrees outside right now. Exactly. With high humidity so a little bit well, hotter, but, but the humidity roughly the same. It is. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's do the interview out here. Sounds good. <laughs> <It's quite laughs> It'll fun. be more comfortable. So listen, you, this heat chamber is part of a study that yes. you're just getting underway right now with yep. a thousand participants. Exactly. Uh, tell, uh, tell me what you're looking at exactly yeah. in terms of heat in the human body. Yeah, so we're really trying to understand how the human body responds to heat exposure and how it's affected by a number of factors, including age, health status, medication use, and physical activity level. And the idea is to try to identify people that bit might be more, but also less at risk of the health outcomes that are associated with heat exposure. I've always found it interesting, uh, you know, when we are uh, living through these kind of conditions that some people, you know, are fine with it. It's, a, you know, enjoy the heat and other people just, you know, I won't go outdoors. And it has nothing necessarily to do with any kind of health conditions. It's just a preference. Absolutely. And there's something to be said about what we study, which are the biological or physiological responses, but there's also a perceptual component, how we perceive the environment. And there's a disconnect between the two. So we can have two individuals that respond roughly the same way physiologically, but one that perceives it as being comfortable and the other person hates it. And you know that's totally normal, it's like with anything, but also speaks to the fact that sometimes maybe we're not very good judges of how hard our body might be working when it's hot and not being aware of the risk that it might incur. Okay, now, so this is sort of the heat chamber, mm -hmm. but there's something yeah. very interesting mm -hmm. going on over here. Maybe you can explain, uh, talk about heat on the body. You're actually heating this person up. <laughs> exactly, so we have the heat chamber to kind of simulate a hot environment, so it's hot outside, um, so we can recreate that in the chamber. Here we have what we call a heat suit um, that we basically use to do more advanced measurements that we could not do in a hot environment. Huh? Um, so basically it's like a wetsuit that we would use to go diving or swimming in cold water, but it has tubes sewn within the material and we circulate very hot water through the suit and that heats up the body and it allows us to do it in a very controlled fashion and again to do more advanced measurements that we could not do otherwise. All right, so how, how does it feel? It's hot but good. <laughs> hot but good. Is that the general sense that people uh, get from wearing this suit? Absolutely. So I like. I always like to say that what we do, there's obviously a certain level of discomfort, but it's always within the limits of uh, tolerance. Uh, and with this method particularly, at the beginning, there's a little bit of a phase where it feels kind of nice and warm and cozy. And then we enter a second phase where people are a little bit drowsy, sleepy, almost as if we were a passenger in a very hot car. And then by the third phase, the last phase, is usually when we're close to being done. And that's when people are usually like, okay, I feel hot and I'm looking forward to it being done. Okay, so why is extreme heat so dangerous for the body? Mm. The first reason is because it affects pretty much the whole body. All organs uh, have to work harder when it's hot outside or when the body is exposed to heat exposure. So we can think of the brain, the heart, the, the liver, things like that. And there are really three main reasons why it can be dangerous. First, our internal body temperature can go up to dangerous levels. That's when we talk about things like heat exhaustion or heat stroke. And heat stroke is potentially deadly if it's not recognized and treated immediately. So that's one reason. <clears throat> the second reason is when the body's hot, it tries to defend itself. And it causes other organs in the, in the body to work harder, namely the heart. So our heart rate will increase, it'll beat faster, it'll also beat harder. And that can be dangerous, especially for people with known or unknown heart disease. It could lead, uh, it's been shown that heat exposure is associated with a greater risk of heart attacks, for example. And the third reason is dehydration that can place strain or make the kidneys work harder. And we get dehydrated because we sweat. And that's a very important response because it's actually our main way to cool off, but we lose water when we sweat. And if we don't drink enough water, then we'll, we'll have a net loss of body water and become dehydrated. 
and that can be problematic for especially people that have known or even unknown kidney disease as well. All right, so how important is prevention <laughs> when we talk about he extreme heat? Yeah, absolutely. Right now, I feel like we're a bit in a reactionary mode. It, you know, during the summer, it gets hot. We talk about it in the moment. What are we going to do right now, today? I think there's something to be said about we're going to encounter these extreme heat episodes more and more frequently. So we need to try and move towards more of a prevention. Individually, we can think, okay, am I somebody that might be particularly at risk? What can I do if it's hot outside? How can I ensure I stay cool? And we can also think of people that might be close to us that might be at risk and maybe check in on them and make sure that they're doing fine and that they have access to cooler spaces if they don't. Well, speaking of cool, this is very cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for coming.